Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these really cute novelty handbags. So this one is the Father Christmas and this one is an elf. And I really like how they come together. Some of you have recognised the bag shape and all I've done is just shrunk it down. So again, it's a size that I, I haven't done before. So I will put the measurements within the title and then it'll be easy for you to find this size gift bag. And I will also pop it in my gift bag playlist and my... I'll probably do a novelty one because last year I done the big Christmas pudding and I done another Father Christmas one but it was a circular bag and those were really popular and many of you made those so I will link that up here and you'll be able to find any other novelty style kind of um, bags and boxes that I'll pop in there. So this is what we're making. The measurements for these ones are, it is two and a half in depth and it is six and a quarter wide and then well the, the highest point is seven but the side there is six, just under six. So they're a nice size, it definitely can fit, you know, some lovely smaller gifts in there. And then I've popped a Velcro fastening so it just seals at the top like so. And this one here, you can see, just take them apart there. You've got all that room. You don't have to have the sides sticking out, you can pop them inside if you would rather. And I'll show you what I've used for the tag and uh, the buckle and everything. I've also got some stitching detail here and just some use of your border punches and dies and things like that just to create these fun little details. So this is what we're going to make. Okay, so I'm using the, these are some punches that I shared a while back now when I received um, a lovely parcel from Dress My Craft. So they've sent me this border punch, which is the scallop border punch, and it's really good for obviously having a scallop detail on, you know, your cards and things like that, but for creating fun elements. So like the collar, for example, which I've done on the, did I use it on that one? No, it was for the um, the piece through the middle where like the Santa's, the, the fur would be on the coat. But I think what I'm gonna do today is do it around the collar and maybe make more of a Mrs. Claus. So this is this is Mr. Claus and then we'll do a Mrs. Claus. So we will see. And then this is the two and a half scallop punch which I've used for the tag. Then I've got my 20 mil hook and loop which is the dot and dab range. And then I've got all my pieces here. So the buckle, I. I've had these for a while, I brought quite a few, I, I think I had them maybe not even last year but the year before and um, obviously they're meant for, you know, making your own, you know, belts and using them for dressmaking and things like that but they're great for paper craft so um, you would have seen me feature these in other handbag tutorials. I'll try and link something similar because on the elf one I've actually used the silver so, um, you know, any kind of buckle, if you just pop in belt buckles um, on Amazon and eBay, places like that, you should be able to find somebody selling them. But also go into a charity shop and if there's a load of belts for like 50p or something, some of them you can probably cut away. I mean, leather ones are a bit more difficult, but f fabric ones, you could probably cut everything off and just be left with a nice, nice, a nice buckle. So just check those things out because that's what I like to do. The stamps I'm using is this one here, which is the Pink Fresh. And it's the one with that lovely big poncettia that I used for one of my tutorials when I shared the showed the to uh, the Nova markers, but it was free on a magazine. I can't remember which magazine, but again, I'll try and link it below because I know a few of you have got that one because you've shared it before. Yeah, and then also some circle dies if you don't have any punches. So, okay, so you're going to need two pieces of. Let me get the main pieces because it's all deconstructed. So you've got the, the different colours on the sides there. So you want two pieces that are six and a quarter by nine and a half. And along the nine and a half inch side, on both those pieces, you want to score at two and a half. Okay, and then just fold and burnish. And again, I'd already done that one, so just fold and burnish. Okay, so that's those two ready. So these are three and a half by eight and a quarter. So it's the length of A4. Okay, along that long side you want to score at two and a half. Then on the shorter side you want to score at half an inch and three inches. And then also score at one and three quarters, about, I don't know, almost down, you've got about one inch from where I'm stopping there to that score line that you e-scored, that two and a half score line. It's just going to help you fold out these pieces here. I'm not doing all the other bits because we're not folding it flat, but just to help it kind of stay in that position, because if you don't add that score line, it's likely to just kind of want to pop open. So by adding that score line, it will just help it all keep its shape. 
So do that on both pieces and again you just want to fold and burnish. I'm just pinching that one just down to the top there. Okay, so I've got those two pieces and then for your straps you want two pieces that are one inch by 11 and 3 quarters so it's the default A4 length. 11 inches will be fine, 12 inches you may even want them shorter again. I have started the stitching on one of them but I'll do the other one in a minute I'll show you my pen that I use. And then I've got these pieces here and these pieces here. So these are to go completely optional but it was just some detail and it's to do this piece here. I just quite like that, I don't know, just I thought it looked nice. I'll show you there on the black I've done the white but because we've got white on the side of this one which is why I thought it looked good as Mrs Claus I've done the red. So these pieces measure two and a half by three quarters of an inch. You want two pieces and along that two and a half inch I just scored at one and a quarter and again one and a quarter and then just fold and burnish. And then these pieces here, one is for the belt. All right, now you will, yours may vary in the width because I've done mine so that it fits through this particular buckle. So depending on what you're doing, I know a lot of you will probably die cut. You can just die cut a silver circle or a gold circle, that will work fine. And then just sit that behind the, because um, you imagine that piece wouldn't be seen anyway. So if that was, I'm going to take that piece off in a minute, but if that was to just feed through, it just looks like a circle. So if you just die cut a silver or a, like I said, a silver or a gold circle, then it will work fine. So depending on what the width is of the inner diameter of what you punch will then depend on the width of this. You just want to make sure it fits through, but the length will be six and a quarter. It's the full length of this piece here. Okay, you can see that it fits across nicely. And then this piece is the centre part that looks like the, the jacket. And this is one and a half by seven. Now it won't be one and a half once I punch the sides so it will end up becoming more about just over one really okay. But again all of that you can change and you know you might want to do yours a little bit differently to mine anyway. Okay so with the side pieces here we just want to do a little bit of cutting so where you've got that score line that two and a half score line on the bottom you just want to cut the side pieces off so that side that side and then remove them but also you might as well just cut on an angle like that just take a little wedge out just so you don't get any of that overhanging so I'm just going to cut straight away on an angle and just cut that away like so and then also just take a little wedge off of both sides again do that on this one here Okay, now if you would prefer to stick down the detail on this top piece before you put it all together, you can. I'm going to put mine all together just because I like to have it all in its 3D form and then start kind of adding the decoration. So what you want to do first of all, I'm just going to grab my, my glue and you just want to add some glue along the side of the tab. You can use double sided tape as well if you want. Just make sure it's quite strong. So a red red liner tape, something like that will work well. And then you just want to make sure that your base score line here lines up with this base score line here. You're not lining up your tops because this one comes down shorter. So again, I'm just going to push all that out of the way and just lie that one down. And just sit it right next to the score line. And then fold it over. You can also depending if you're using a liquid glue or not, but you can always move it and wiggle it around just to make sure that you get it lined up. Sometimes when I rub like that, it might slide the glue, but now when I open that up and that pushes out, you imagine that's going to be underneath and that pushes out the side. Okay, then grab another one of your sides and again, pop some glue on the, so this will be the left hand side that you're going to do this one and you're going to pop it on the opposite side. Again, lining up those base score lines. Okay, and then grab your other piece, pop another layer of glue on the other tab, and stick this one down. Okay, and then fold the whole thing over, fold that side, and then with this side here, again, just add some glue. 
Lie that one down flat underneath and then that one should line up perfectly and the whole thing should lie flat. I'm just going to let that all dry. Okay, so now decide which one you want to be the front and the back. So I'm going to keep this as my front. So you want to fold the back down first and then you want to pop some glue on this piece. And fold in both of your sides, pop some more glue on the top. Turn the whole thing upside down and then using a ruler or your hand you can just go in there and just push everything down. Okay so now we've got the bag. Next I'm going to grab my handles. So I'd already done one, with the other one I've used my Posca pen, this one here. It's the 0.7 mil. You must always give it a good shake just so it mixes everything up otherwise it'll come out very diluted and weak and the, although it may come out quite white it will then become quite translucent and almost disappear so you've got to give it a good shake and then you'll get that lovely crisp white this is great for adding you know any kind of highlight snow effects and this kind of faux stitching so I'm just going to go along here and literally just put little dashes all the way along the sides Okay, so now they're all done. So I'm going to do this one first just because I know it's dry and I'm just going to stick it like that. Now, because I'm this is the front and I'm adding the collar, for these ones I'm actually going to stick them behind. But you can see, so there I stuck them behind and then on the elf I actually stuck them over the top. They kind of look like braces, so it's entirely up to you, you know, depending on what look that you want to go for, but I'm going to stick these ones behind. So I'm going to use my hot glue just because it's a little bit quicker, and I'm just going to put a thin bead covering about half an inch, and it's up to you how far you're in. You want to come up, come in about one and a quarter inches. I'm just going to hold that one there for a second, keeping everything nice and straight. Okay, like so, and then I'm just going to bring the other one around like that. Again, just cover a small little section there and just stick it in, coming in roughly about the same. Okay, so that's now stuck inside. And okay, and then also what you can do is die cut some circles and put the circles covering that if you want to but um, I'm happy with that. Then with this one, you want to do the same on the back. All I'm going to do is use the ones that I've just stuck down on the front as a guide. So if you just kind of pop it in there, if you lie it on this one, so lie it on top of that one, and then just kind of close this one, and it will like pick it up, there we go. At least that way you know that you've got them. In line with each other like that. Okay then I've got my hook and loop so I'm just going to pop a pair together and just stick one in there and then stick that together. And I'm just going to leave that there because now it's ready for me to decorate the front. So first of all I'm going to use this piece here. So using that punch these work just like all other border punches, so you just punch anywhere you want and then you'll see the lovely detail that you get there. And then you just move it along, left or right, it doesn't matter, until you start to, it starts to sit within this silver pattern here and you line it up perfectly with that pattern. Keep everything straight and then punch again and you'll see it will perfectly continue. So again, if I come along a bit further, Always make sure you keep it straight. You get the last ones in there. And then I can go back now along this side and use this end to just finish off the rest of it. See, and then if you miss a piece like that, it just means I've got to come down a little bit further. So let's do it there. There we go. I've got a mark on that, I have to turn it over. And then again, I'm just going to carry up all the way up here just so I can finish off that end like so and then I've still got that little bit there so just need to come up a tiny bit more and now you've got a really fun decorative edge so I'm going to do the same on the other side
Okay, so that one is going to go right down through the centre. Now I've got a little bit there, but I think I've gone a little bit long, so what I can do is just trim a tiny little bit of excess off there. Yeah, now that sits perfectly there. Then I'm just going to remove this piece here. And then I'm going to pop this piece through and I want to make sure that I get it in the centre. So about there. And then I'm going to just make sure it doesn't move around. I'm just going to pop some hot glue either side and just let that kind of do its thing. just feel it needs to go a little bit that way. There we go. So I'm just going to let that sit for a minute. Okay, I've just put some faux stitching on these pieces and I'm just going to stick these in place again. Just waiting for that hot glue to really set on that buckle before I stick it down. These ones here you just pinch around the tops. So they're completely optional but I don't know, just thought it adds a nice touch. And I'm probably going to do a bit more stitching on this one just because it's Mrs Claus. I quite like the um, the faux stitching. Okay, and then this piece here I'm just going to stick right down through the centre. And then with the other sides of this I'm just going to pop some glue. And again this in the center and it's this that does it you could put that on anything and it would just look really really fun I love it I actually think I use the same buckles on the ones I did last year so okay so now I want to make the little collar here so what I'm going to probably do is I would like to have that scallop detail so I might even let's just try something I haven't done it this way but let's have a look so I'm just going to use this punch like so. So that's a two and a half punch and then I'm just going to line, try and get like the centre, so one and a quarter. Like so. And then let's see, because this is two and a half here so it may well... Yeah, look! I think that works perfectly. So, because I was going to add a little necklace as well, like some, and I was going to do some little gold. So I'd like it to tuck under there a little bit more, but then I've got, oh, that doesn't matter though. Yeah, I think that looks really quite cute, doesn't it? I, I really like it. I guess it could be Father Christmas still, but I'm going to go with Mrs. Claus. And then I think I'm going to do like a little necklace or something there. So I'm going to get these stuck down first. So yeah, if you get yourself a two and a half roughly diameter circle, and you can do it just, you know, with a plain circle, it would still look nice. But if you've got a scallop one or something with a nice little decorative finish, then it would just add a little bit more character to the bag. Yeah, I think that looks quite sweet. Again, it's completely optional, but I am just going to pop a little, just a little chain there, just so, I don't know, I look at it, I'm looking at it in the monitor and I just don't know. I do like it, but... Maybe I'll just keep it plain. Let me know what you think. I'm going to leave it plain because I can add this on whenever. And let me, tell me what you think. Do you think I should add the necklace or not? It's got a load of glitter on it now, so, which doesn't matter anyway. But um, yeah, let me know what you think because I love it like that. But anyway, I'm going to pop these two um, to one side and I can always, yeah, like I said, add them again later. Okay, so I'll quickly make the tag. So I'm just going to punch one of these large circles and then I've got a two and a half punch here sorry that's two and a half and this is a two inch and that one's just going to stick in the center there and then I went around it with the Posca pen again just to add a little bit more stitching I think I may add some along maybe I don't know sometimes I, I end up doing too much okay then I just want to stamp my image so let's find which one I want to use I've got Christmas wishes Merry Christmas on the other ones so let's do well there's happy holidays so we'll do that one there we go these have got such a lovely font I really like those ones a lot although that one seems to have 
smudged us or something on that. Okay, let's turn it over, stamp it again. And then I'm just going to add, because that still might be a bit wet, I'm just going to add a foam pad in the centre of that one. And then just pop that there. And then I'm just going to do some stitching. And I'm just going to punch a hole. I'm just using the smaller from the cropper dial. I'm just going to pop one at the top like so and then I've got this nice twine here which has got all the colours through it so the green red and white I've used this a lot especially for wrapping as well it's really nice I always cut off more than I need but um, it's okay just thread that through I kind of do a knot at the top first like so and then just on the front handle, I'm just going to wrap that around and then just tie it off in a nice bow. Okay, so there is the finished bag. I really like it. Like I said, let me know in the comments if you think I should add a little necklace or not. But I just think it looks great either way. I'm really pleased with these. So that's Mrs. Claus. Then you've got... Mr. Claus or Father Christmas. I've just added more black on that one. So just to give you ideas on how different you can make them. And then the elf, I do really like this one. I think it looks really, really cute. So yeah, yeah, there you have them. Very, very easy to make. The gift bag on its own is great just for, you know, birthdays and any occasion really. But just adding those touches onto the front and choosing your colors can then make it into more of a novelty thing. So yeah, I really like them. So thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today and consider subscribing so you get to see more. Bye.